Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, um, I'm sure you'll know by now that Lisa's daughter, Emily, is actually having a baby. She's the person I keep referring to as my friend is having a baby with all of the lumberjack stuff. It's not really lumberjack stuff, but that's what you look it up and that's what it looks like. Um, she has picked out, when I was there in the summer, um, she picked out a bunch of different fabrics. She found a, um, she found an inspiration quilt on Etsy. And she said, do you think we can make this for less than $160? I said, absolutely. I think the materials, because she did get some really nice high-end materials. I, I really don't feel like it costs more than $35, but I'll have to check with her. Uh, because, like, she paid for it. So, um, I'll show you quickly all that we got. And then I'll just piece quilting it together. So what we did was at her house, let me show you. At her house in Texas, she had bought all of these different fabrics. And um, what she did was she, um, we picked out a design. Let me just turn it around so you can see where it's at. So we picked out a design and we cut the squares out individually. And the reason she wanted to do that was she wanted to lay out like, so like this particular pattern she wanted it to say be strong and be brave at this particular square so what she did was she took um we basically made a 10 by 10 template because we wanted to have one inch seam allowances because it's going to be a baby blanket that will last for a long time so um we want a finished product of being 40 by 56 i think it's going to be because there's seven there's five squares across and seven squares long um and i'll show you what it looks like laid out I'll insert pictures um, but what I'm doing is um, when I'm doing this kind of quilt so what I did was I pieced these two together and sewed them and then pieced these two together and sewed them and then I sewed the two sections together and now I have to sew on the fifth panel and it's gonna be a changing pattern quilt and the only other pat the only other fabric that I didn't show you out of these is this um, like hobnail sort of fabric. I know that's not what it's called, but I just can't imagine what else to call it. Um, but then that'll repeat and um, that'll replace the black squares every once in a while. Um, they'll be like a black hobnail instead of a black fleece. Um, and then the backing is going to be that big giant buffalo check that we bought at Walmart. So it's going to have fleece on the back. We Oh, that's pretty. We originally were going to put the flannel on the back and quilt it. But I, when I found that at the price that I found it at, I was like, would you rather we do this? And you don't have to worry about like over time batting sometimes has, if you can't quilt it, batting sometimes has a tendency to move around. If you've ever had a comforter and tried to wash it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so I was like, this would be better. And she's like, well, I just don't like when the two layers don't slide together. I was like, that's easy. We can fix that with embroidery thread and knots. It'll be fine. So I'm going to get to sewing. I'm not doing like a full tutorial like I would normally do because you guys have seen sewing. You guys have seen me piece. And I will um, do the back the exact same way we did the milestone number blanket um, so that it has a pretty, it has a nice border of the uh, fleece on the back. Uh, it'll be a border around the front as well. Um, but I will uh, jump back on here and check in with you every once in a while just to tell you like updates and see how we're going, okay? Bye. So here's where the challenge lies when you're doing multi tech, uh, multi types of fabric. So we have two flannel, three fl two flannels, two flannels, three flannels, I do. I have three flannels, one like minky fleece and uh, hobnail fleece and then a black plain black fleece and um, they have different stretches so you have to make sure you pin them along the way um, but uh, what I'm doing is um, like I told you I'm you know sew together the first two then the second two and then I add on the the third piece and add to the second okay first section all right I sew together <laughs> numbers one and two then I sew three and four and then I sew five to four and then I sew <laughs> two to three um, is the way I was taught to do it on Nancy's notions. And then um, when we come to the um, piecing the rows together, 
This fabric, none of it is translucent or transparent. None of it's really thin. So I don't have to worry about the color of which way the seam, uh, the salvage is gonna lay. Um, so what you do is you'll match up the thing and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but because I'm doing that, I'm just making it easier for me to lay the salvage in the direction the machine wants to go. If that doesn't make sense. So um, under underneath, um, the the fabric that's on that touches the machine if if that uh seam allowance is going this way um it'll walk naturally and then you'll just have to watch the top seam allowance that goes that way to um walk it under and make sure that it gets caught on the needles and not jumped up so if you did it the other way sometimes the presser foot wants to walk the fabric back and you can get it all bunched up so um gotta keep sewing i keep saying so but that's what i gotta do bye so I'm about to piece the rows together and I do one, once I finish a row, I piece it right on so I don't forget the order. I don't have to worry about the order. It doesn't take, there's no special like you have to do anything. So the professional quilters or the quilters on TV, what they'll do is once they have this, um, as you can see, they're not all cut even because we didn't cut them with like, excuse me, we didn't cut them with like a mat and a, ro a rotary cutter. These were all hand cut. So they can be different sizes um, and some will stretch you know well really not so much stretch they they laid out as different sizes um, but what I did was I tried to just keep them um, eight inch squares the best I could so what I want to show you now is um, what I was talking about matching up um, the the seams okay and um, because I'm going to be sewing in this direction I want my uh, top seam to go up and my bottom seam to go down. You don't want them both going in the same direction because it'll end up with a lot of bulk here. So now that I know which direction I want my seams to go, I lay them both in those directions and then I match the two edges of the same fabrics. Can you see those white fabrics in there? So I match them up because with this kind of quilt that's sort of like a brick pattern, I guess I don't even know, it's, it probably does have a name, uh, but I don't know it. But um, the corresponding row will have a, a pattern, a fabric that will match up to it. Um, in fact, some will uh, have two, but I'll show you. Um, because we start with this, um, so like the next one here will be the hobnail fabric will match up. And then the next one will, the deer fabric will match up. So um, they want to do the same thing. So we're going to put our top layer towards the direction that we're going to be coming from and our bottom layer pulled away and we want to match those two black edges up and we want to pin on both sides now i'm sure there is way more better uh, quilting tutorials out there i'm nowhere near a professional quilter but i do break it down easy for you guys to understand because i'm not a professional quilter i guess that's do i make it less intimidating maybe um when you're also doing like a quilt quilt I, i've never not never but i haven't done a uh like a quilt quilt uh i've always just done piece quilts let's put it that way um that's not true i did them in i did it in homemakers but what you do is you want to take your iron out and you want to open you know either iron your seams open or whatever and you want to iron and you want to cut the edges blah 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 but this is just a simple um a simple way to achieve this look for less than a hundred and sixty dollars so laying this one down laying this one up and matching those two white edges now the um, the hand cut red uh, buffalo check that we have here they're all bigger than um, than than they're supposed to be they're all bigger than 10 by 10 um, because we, I guess we cut on, uh, like at the edge of the squares for the buffalo check. Okay. And this last one. Nope. I went backwards. And this last one. I'm going to match up these two red fabrics.
And now what I'm, the only places that I'm pinning, and this is totally depending on how comfortable you are with sewing, um, you could pin like each of these sections along the way. <coughs> but I'm comfortable sewing that. I'm going to, I'm going to pin each of the seam allowances down and then I'm going to pin the loose um, to the end. So basically like um, how this is, how this doesn't have, um, so this is like the end. So there's not another seam allowance that I'm pinning here. So I'm going to pin this to the edge, to the, uh, to the last row on the one before. Basically I'm going to pin the ones that don't have two sides pinned. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And then my first one. And so these, I think we talked about this in the last blanket. This is uh, quilt pinning I believe they call it I don't know but well you can actually sew the machine will sew over these pins so you don't have to take them out as you go but I usually do so I'm not showing you hi I'm not showing you all the sewing part because you guys seen me sew before but I want to show you this part and then I'll show you how we're gonna finish it okay so we finished this pretty much how we finished the last tutorial, uh, the last blanket, excuse me. I was able to cut the backing um, two buffalo check rows wider than the front. And then I pinned the top and the bottoms evenly, sewed those, left the corners open. Then I pinned the two sides evenly, sewed those, left the corners open. And then I was able to... Um, to uh, miter the corners. Um, I left this one panel open above the buffalo check and I figured that would be a good place to blend the seam that you really couldn't tell very well. And then we turned, once we mitered the corners, we turned right sides together and uh, finished it off. Now Emily wanted the two sections not to be quilted together but to not come apart. So what we decided to do is I took embroidery floss and I put on um, the fur, the I knotted the four corners around the center black square um, on all four corners with a little knot of embroidery floss and left it tassel-like. And I told her we can do as many or as little as she wants, and that was good enough for her. Hey. Hey. Is this my she might need it now. <laughs> oh, I got it. It's not your blanket. It's Maverick. No, it's fine. <laughs> hey, stop it. I don't know what it's in there. I have no idea why that's in there. It probably was stuck to the blanket. <laughs> or something. Or something. Ow. Awesome. Just hit me with it. It's a, I'm so just kidding. Stop. Wait, let mommy open the blanket. Look out. Let me see the baby's blanket. <laughs> Can I give you a hug for my present? But I had the best present <laughs> from you. You gave me the best present. Oh, so good. Can you move? Cry. Jack, to go away. She did it. <laughs> I have I have all the, I have all the pictures of Emily doing it. Look, Jackson, it's for the baby. So I only that is so cute. That is so I only knotted around this center square, but I brought it with me in case you wanted more. I didn't know. So So that's it everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed doing it. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in learning easy, simple piece quilting techniques. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe, and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And why don't you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for Emily, because she did a great job designing this blanket. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!